Welcome. This is the one year Bible reading for April 3rd, and we begin today in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 23. If a man's testicles are crushed or his penis is cut off, he may not be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. If a person is illegitimate by birth, neither he nor his descendants for ten generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants for ten generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. These nations did not welcome you with food and water when you came out of Egypt. Instead, they hired Balaam, son of Beor from Pethor, in distant uh, Aram Naharim, to curse you. But the Lord your God refused to listen to Balaam. He turned the intended curse into a blessing, because the Lord your God loves you. As long as you live, you must never promote the welfare and prosperity of the Ammonites or Moabites. Do not detest the Edomites or the Egyptians, because the Edomites are your relatives, and you lived as foreigners among the Egyptians. The third generation of Edomites and Egyptians may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you go to war against your enemies, be sure to stay away from anything that is impure. Any man who becomes ceremonially defiled because of a nocturnal emission must leave the camp and stay away all day. Toward the evening he must bathe himself, and at sunset he may return to the camp. You must have a designated area outside the camp where you can go to relieve yourself. Each of you must have a spade as part of your equipment. Whenever you relieve yourself, dig a hole with a spade and cover the excrement. The camp must be holy, for the Lord your God moves around in your camp to protect you and to defeat your enemies. He must not see any shameful thing among you, or he will turn away from you. If slaves should escape from their masters and take refuge with you, you must not hand them over to their masters. Let them live among you in any town they choose, and do not oppress them. No Israelite, whether man or woman, may become a temple prostitute. When you are bringing an offering to fulfill a vow, you must not bring to the house of the Lord your God any offering from the earth earnings of a prostitute, whether a man or a woman, for both are detestable to the Lord your God. Do not charge interest on the loans you make to fellow Israelites, whether you loan money or food or anything else. You may charge interest to foreigners, but you may not charge interest to Israelites, so that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you do in the land you are about to enter and occupy. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, be prompt in fulfilling whatever you promised him. For the Lord your God demands that you promptly fulfill all your vows, or you will be guilty of sin. However, it is not a sin to refrain from making a vow. But once you have voluntarily made a vow, be careful to fulfill your promise to the Lord your God. When you enter your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes, but you must not carry away any in a basket. And when you enter your neighbor's field of grain, you may pluck the heads of grain with your hand, but you must not harvest it with a sickle. Suppose a man marries a woman, but she does not please him. After having discovered something wrong with her, he writes her a letter of divorce, hands it to her, and sends her away from his house. When she leaves his house, she is free to marry another man. But if the second husband also turns against her and divorces her, or if he dies, the first husband may not marry her again, for she has been defiled. That would be detestable to the Lord. You must not bring guilt upon the land the Lord your God is giving you as a special possession. A newly married man must not be drafted into the army or be given any other official responsibilities. He must be free to spend one year at home, bringing happiness to the wife he has married. It is wrong to take a set of millstones, or even just the upper millstone, as security for a loan, for the owner uses it to make a living. If anyone kidnaps a fellow Israelite and treats him as a slave or sells him, the kidnapper must die. In this way you will purge the evil from among you. In all cases involving serious skin diseases, be careful to allow the instru- to follow the instructions of the Levitical priests. Obey all the commands I have given them. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam as you were coming from Egypt. If you lend anything to your neighbor, do not enter his house to pick up the item he is giving as security. You must wait outside while he goes in and brings it out to you. If your neighbor is poor and gives you his cloak as security for a loan, 
Do not keep the cloak overnight. Return the cloak to its owner by sunset, so he can stay warm through the night and bless you, and the Lord your God will count you as righteous. Never take advantage of the poor and destitute laborers, whether they are fellow Israelites or foreigners living in your towns. You must pay them for their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. If you don't, they might cry out to the Lord against you and it would be counted against you as sin. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor children for the sins of their parents. Those deserving to die must be put to death for their own crimes. True justice must be given to foreigners living among you and to orphans, and you must never accept a widow's garment as security for her debt. Always remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God redeemed you from your slavery. That is why I have given you this command. When you are harvesting your crops and forget to bring in a bundle of grain from your field, don't go back and get it. Leave it for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. When you beat the olives from your olive trees, don't go over the boughs twice. Leave the remaining olives for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. When you gather grapes in your vineyard, don't glean the vines after they are picked. Leave the remaining grapes for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Remember that you were slaves in the land of Egypt. That is why I am giving you this command. And Ruth comes to mind in this. Boaz was obedient to still be following this command, and that provided grain for Ruth and Naomi. Suppose two people take a dispute to court and the judges declare that one is right and the other is wrong. If the person in the wrong is sentenced to be flogged, the judge must command him to lie down and be beaten in his presence with the number of lashes appropriate to the crime. But never give more than 40 lashes. More than 40 lashes would publicly humiliate your neighbor. You must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the garden. If two brothers are living together on the same property and one of them dies without a son, his widow may not be married to anyone from outside the family. Instead, her husband's brother should marry her and have intercourse with her to fulfill the duties of a brother-in-law. The first son she bears to him will be considered the son of the dead brother, so that his name will not be forgotten in Israel. But if the man refuses to marry his brother's widow, she must go to the town gate and say to the elders assembled there, My husband's brother refuses to preserve his brother's name in Israel. He refuses to fulfill the duties of a brother-in-law by marrying me. The elders of the town will then summon him and talk with him. If he still refuses and says, I don't want to marry her, the widow must walk over to him in the presence of the elders, pull his sandal from his foot, and spit in his face. Then she must declare, this is what happens to a man who refuses to provide his brother with children. Afterward, even ever afterward, in Israel, his family will be referred to as the family of the man whose sandal was pulled off. If two Israelite men get into a fight and the wife of one tries to rescue her husband by grabbing the testicles of the other man, she, you must cut off her hand, show her no pity. You must use accurate scales when you weigh out merchandise, and you must use full and honest measures. Yes, always use honest weights and measures so that you may enjoy a long life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. All who cheat with dishonest weights and measures are detestable to the Lord your God. Never forget what the Amalekites did to you as you came from Egypt. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary, and they struck down those who were straggling behind. They had no fear of God. Therefore, when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemies in the land he has given you as a special possession, you must destroy the Amalekites and erase their memory from under heaven. Never forget this. Luke chapter 10, beginning in verse 13. What sorrow awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida? For if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago, clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their heads to show their remorse. Yes, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on Judgment Day than you. And you people of Capernaum, will you be honored in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me, and anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. 
and anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the seventy-two disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. At the same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever, and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it in this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, when they were alone, he turned to the disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings longed to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they longed to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he said to Jesus, asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Psalm 75, a psalm of Asaph. We thank you, O God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. God says, At the time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundations firm. I warned the proud, Stop your boasting. I told the wicked, Don't raise your fists. Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth from east or west or even from the wilderness should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what, the, what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Proverbs 12, 12 through 14. Thieves are jealous of each other's loot, but the godly are well rooted and bear their own fruit. The wicked are trapped by their own words, but the godly escape such trouble. Wise words bring many benefits and hard work brings rewards. And to end today, I have a blessing for you, and it comes from 
Where does it come from? Right here. James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. May God himself fill you with pure joy amidst your trials. May you understand that he's developing perseverance in you, so you will be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. May you see the blessing in your battles. Instead of becoming self-aware and wondering why so many arrows are aimed at you, may you simply become a better warrior. May you lay hold of the generous amounts of wisdom God has offered you in this place, so that when it's all said and done, you're still standing. Have a great and victorious day today. Love you all. Have a beautiful day.